obviously you've had a very, very long and varied career. So maybe tell me a little bit about how you got, got started in being interested in flight and uh, where that took you. Of course, this is a long time ago because I am a person of a certain age, we'll say. From the time that I was a little bitty kid, I told the family that I wanted to grow up and be an Air Force fighter pilot. The reality was that I lived in a little bitty camping trailer behind an auto garage in a town that if you counted all the ranches was about 135 people out in the desert of California. So there was not going to be any way that these types of dreams were going to be realized. When I went to high school in the town of Lone Pine, California, there was a fellow who was a Korean War era veteran Air Force fighter pilot, Major Ray Powell. He was the area liaison for the Air Force Academy. He mentored me through the process to apply to go to the Academy. I was accepted. I actually graduated and went to pilot training and uh, this is back in the day started out in the F-4 uh, and then ultimately into the F-15. He was the positive influence in my life up through when I was promoted to colonel within the Air Force before he passed. So I love to talk to young people about the power of mentorship because it's something that made a fundamental difference in my life to be able to achieve my, uh, my life goal. Certainly I think that most people when they think of the Civil Air Patrol certainly think of teenagers getting their wings um, and learning to serve their country at an early age. But where, how does the Civil Air Patrol fit in in kind of not only traditional cockpit pilots, but now RPA pilots, those kind of things. It's, uh, it's a great topic, and uh, uh, certainly the, the Air Force, uh, the chief, that's one of his uh, top priorities. And, uh, and uh, the Air Force pilot shortage, of, of course, is a, a subset of the, uh, the larger worldwide shortage of pilots that, uh, that everybody is facing. So what can the Air Force do about it? Uh, as the civilian auxiliary, uh, we have a seat at the table for helping to think through this through and to be part of the solution as well. And if you can imagine feeding a funnel, if you will, it's not a linear pipeline, but feeding a funnel to where Civil Air Patrol as what you might refer to as a pre-accession program uh, can start right down there with kids and get them excited about STEM-related materials, a broad-based uh, excitement and engagement with uh, STEM-related things with an emphasis on aviation. They have the opportunity to receive orientation flights, both powered and glider as well, at no cost to, to them. Uh, and then uh, uh, for the kids who are really motivated, they have the opportunity to attend one of our flight academies and continue to fly them as they work towards getting into an accession program, whether it's ROTC or the Air Force Academy or into OTS. The Air Force has invested in us to help make that happen. They have invited us in. We're part of that total force and the ability to be part of the solution. But it boils down to the, the spirit of the volunteer. CAP is unlike any other volunteer organization I've ever seen. I'm very biased, of course. Uh, but again, people from every walk of life who give of their time, treasure, and talent to a degree that far suppresses what you see normally from volunteers doing real things uh, that, are, that are helping on an operational level, whether it's disaster and response or search and rescue, with developing young people to be highly successful and ethical leaders for the next uh, generation.